Hi, I'm Snehashree, Senior Product Manager at Sprink, a B2B payments platform. Hi, I'm Sindhu, Product Owner at Backbase, an engagement banking platform. We're back with another video and in this one, we'll talk to you about the technical skills which PMs require. When I say technical, everyone imagines computer screens with dark mode and green code and matrix sort of images going on. But let me tell you, we are here to make it all to make it all simple. When I say technical, it does not directly translate into the ability to code. Being technical is more than that. And as PMs, we require the breadth of technical knowledge rather than the depth of it. Because this is a longer topic, we have broken it into two videos. And in today's video, we will be covering the basics of any software application, version control and releases, system architecture, and a few non-functional requirements. To start with, as a developer turned PM, it has helped me under, it has helped me understand during this transition that it's important to have an understanding of technology it's not that we need to know everything about it in depth it's good if you but at least we should have a bird's eye view on it so that it helps us make find that balance between when we talk to business and the product development scene to get started with this i want to talk about some of the major components of web application to start with a web application majorly consists of four components well, more than that, but let's start simple. So majorly, it contains front-end, back-end, database, and APIs or gateways. Now about front-end, it's all about what you see or what user can see and interact with. It's about words, images, style, font, color, everything you, you see there. That's all the responsibility of front-end. Some of the factors here which is important are performance, user experience, and accessibility. What's this user experience and performance? It's about when a user tries to access it, how quickly he can find, how he is able to access it seamlessly and makes it more smoother. Now, our accessibility is all about how differently able people can access, navigate and interact through your web content without any issues. The front end is built using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, etc. or using some of the frameworks like Angular, React. Coming to backend, backend is everything you can't see. It's it's all about uh, the validation, uh, functionality, logic, algorithm that runs behind us so the user can get what he wants based on his inputs. Some of the important things or factors here are readability, reusability, security, performance, etc. Now the backend can be built using any programming languages like famous. You can take like Java, Python, Node.js, etc. But some of the famous web frameworks are Spring Boot, Django, Ruby on Rails. Now coming to database, database is the place where you can store the data. Data can be anything about like user, his characteristics, functionalities, relation between the user and other entities. Now here are some of the things to consider or talk about are the factors for databases about consistency, availability, maintainability, scalability, etc. Database is usually majorly two types. One is relational or SQL. Other one is non-relational or no SQL. Now, after we know database, backend, frontend, it's about API. API is an application programming interface, which is a set of definitions and a protocol which tells about how a software system can be interacting. So it's like a gateway between frontend and a backend. Some of the popular API standards are REST API, SOAP API, and new GraphQL. Now that's all about the components. To give you a real life example so that you can connect more, like take an example of, let's say you are trying to buy something from Amazon. What would you do? You either be accessing Amazon website via your laptop or a mobile application. That's your front end. Now let's say you, may, you add an item to your cart, make a purchase. There, the frontend sends a request to backend via API. Now, what backend does? Backend does some validation, performs logic, finishes the task, and stores the data in the database so that when you come back, you can see order history and all the details about it. This is all about some of the components of web application to start it. This is a simplified version to get started. So now that you know all the components of a web application or in general a software application, let's go ahead and understand how the actual code base is maintained by developers. Have you ever wondered how hundreds of people work together 
on the same code base and never interrupt each other? Take a moment to think. All thanks to version control systems. They are the magic which is playing a key role here. The responsibility of these version control systems is mainly to ensure that everyone's on the same page. It also ensures that everyone is working on the most recent or the latest version of the file and also that they can work uninterrupted and simultaneously. So how does all of this work? Thanks to a few technologies, the most popular one being Git. So there's a main code branch or the master code branch. That is the source of all the code base. Next, developers can create copies of this master branch and then they can develop their individual features, whichever they like, and then combine it with other copies or in fact the main master branch itself. So when we say release, what exactly is happening? The master branch or the code in the master branch is being shared publicly and it's an announcement that a new version of the application is out for the public. Now that you know what a software application consists of, how developers maintain their code, let's see how a system is organized. System architecture or system design is simply how well the components, which I mentioned before, are connected with each other. This includes knowing about components, which we covered, how they interact with each other, environment in which they operate, and the principles which are used to build it. To be honest, there's no perfect architecture for any software system. It's all about evaluating the pros and cons and understand what is more important than the other based on maintainability, reliability, scalability, cost, efficiency, etc. Some of you might have already known or heard about the kind of architectures which we use, like for example, monolithic architecture, layered or tiered architecture, microservices, etc. Now, once we know the components of a system and how they're designed, it's time to know how well a system works. Correct. So when we usually talk about functional requirements, it's how well a system behaves. But you would have also heard the PM has missed defining the non-functional requirements. requirements. Yeah. So Important. yes, non-functional requirements indicate how well a system is operating. Let's try to understand few of the most important ones or ones which we should definitely consider. The first one is performance. Performance is just defined as the amount of useful and successful work a system does in a given amount of time. So let's understand this with APIs. When you take a simple example of an API, performance can be measured in two key ways. One is throughput, the number of successful requests which came back within a given amount of time. For example, if you say that you have sent 10 requests in a minute and you get 10 successful responses, the throughput of that API is 10. Next, the response time. Response time is defined as the end-to-end -end time from when you send the request all the way to getting back a successful response. Usually when you perform a Google search, if you've observed just below the search bar before you go down to the results, you will see that the search has been performed in 0.2 milliseconds or 0.02 milliseconds. So that is the response time of that query. That's another key indicator. Next, let's move on to security. Security can largely be defined into two things, security of data at rest and security of data in motion. So what do I mean data at rest? Data at rest is data which doesn't move across devices or networks. It's basically the data in your hard drives, files, cache, databases, etc. So it's important to understand the level of privacy of this data and encrypt it and encode it according to the right algorithms. Especially in the Euro, with the strict GDPR regulations, it's important to ensure that you also have the right consent from the user while retaining and using their data. Date, security of data in motion is basically when the data is moving across systems, how secure is it along the way? You should always be using secure protocols like HTTPS for safe transmission of data. This way, even when hackers get hold of your data, they will not be able to take the right advantages had it been an unsecure protocol or without encryption and encoding. 
The third non-functional requirement which we should all be considering, especially in times like this, is scalability. So scalability is how well your system can scale up and handle additional traffic and requests and also scale back down and ensure that it optimizes the costs when there's lesser traffic. If you have purchased something during Black Friday or the Diwali sales, you have definitely contributed to some PM's request around scalability. <laughs> yes. So nowadays, uh, a lot of organizations are moving towards the cloud platforms mainly because they are easily scalable. Yeah. More about cloud in our next video, but for now, we should know that scalability is another important non-functional requirement. When there's huge amount of traffic, load balancing plays a very crucial role. It judges which of the multiple systems can handle the request and is free. It routes the traffic into the right system so that there's a lot of efficiency with which you get the response back. So here the optimization is for the fastest time. The last and final non-functional requirement, which is also crucial, is alerting and monitoring. System downtimes, failures, uh, any sort of bottlenecks in the system should be brought to light as soon as possible. That way, you will understand the system is robust. The system should automatically be able to handle the failure path as gracefully as the happy path. That way, the right alerts can be sent out. The alerts which are being sent out should have information on how to overcome the issue and it should also be directed towards the right people who have the permission to make these sort of changes. So concluding, the four most important non-functional requirements are performance, security, scalability, and alerting and monitoring. Every company, tech organization has their own processes, architecture, technologies used. Sometimes it gets difficult to be on top of it. Based on my experience, what really helped me uh, to be on top of it and understand the tech is based on my interactions with my tech team. So I strongly recommend all of you go and talk to your tech team and try to understand some of these things and the jargons they use. As PMs, it's really important for us to be super curious and we always need to be on top of things. So I recommend all of you go talk to your tech team and let us know in the comments what is the one new thing you learned from them. With that, we have come to the end of this video and in the next one, we will be talking about APIs, webhooks, internet and the cloud. Stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment and share.